إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد Indeed, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise him as he deserves to be praised. And we ask his aid and his assistance and we seek his forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of our own souls and from the evil of our wicked actions. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, then there is no one that can misguide. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misguides, then no one can guide. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without any partners. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger. فَإِنَّ أَسْتَقَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَخَيْرُ الْهَدِي هَدِي مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ And indeed the best speech is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the most evil of all affairs are newly invented matters in the religion. And every newly invented matter is considered to be an innovation. وَكُلَّ بِدَعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And every innovation is misguidance and all misguidance is in the hellfire. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in an authentic hadith, مَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا سَيُكَلِّمُهُ رَبُّهُ There is none from amongst you except that his Lord will speak to him and there will be no interpreter between his Lord and the individual. Brothers and sisters, all of us will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of us will stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each and every one of us will be acquainted with our actions, will be acquainted with our speech. Everything will be exposed. That day, when we stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azza wa jalli tells us about the day of judgment. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ When we stand before Allah azza wa jalli, the day of judgment is a day when neither children no wealth will avail you except for the one who comes to Allah Azza wa Jal with a healthy sound heart. Brothers and sisters, we will not have a defense lawyer on that day with his fancy suit and his slippery tongue. We will stand in front of the Lord of the heavens and the earth the one who created everything. Al-Alim. The one who knows everything. Nothing is hidden from him. Al-Sami' The one who hears everything. Al-Basir. The one who sees everything. Brothers and sisters, we need 
to prepare for the day when we will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah Azza wa Jalla he said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad wa attaqu Allah inna Allah khabirun bima ta'maloon. O you who believe, fear your Lord as he deserves to be feared. Fear Allah Azza wa Jal as he deserves to be feared. And let each one of you analyze what he has prepared for tomorrow. Analyze what we have prepared for that day when we will stand before Allah Azza wa Jal. Analyze what we have prepared from good actions. Fear Allah because Allah is well acquainted with that which you do. Brothers and sisters, that day when we stand before Allah Azza wa Jal, the day of judgment, it is different to the life of this world. In this world, we see the criminals, the disobedient, walking around some of them boasting about their sins and the lusts and the desires that they fulfill. The oppressors, the tyrants, they walk on the earth like if authority is this. But when we stand before Allah Azza wa Jal, it's totally different. When we stand before the Lord of the heavens and the earth. It is totally different. Fanduru barakallahu fikum. Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, Yawma tajidu kullu nafsim ma amilat min khayrim muhdara. Wa ma amilat min su. Tawaddu law anna baynaha wa baynahu amadan ba'idah. On that day, the day of judgment, everyone will be confronted by their actions. Their good deeds will be apparent. Their bad deeds will be apparent. But the individual will wish that there was a great distance between him and his evil deeds. To what do? He hopes. But this is a hope and a wish which has no reality. It's too late. It's too late. He doesn't want to be acquainted with his sins. He doesn't want to be acquainted with his actions. He doesn't want to be acquainted with his shortcomings. Look, Ikhwan, Allah tells us he hopes. He wishes and hopes that there was a great distance between him and his evil deeds. That day, Ikhwan, man ahabba liqa Allah. Whoever loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet them. Are we preparing for this day? The day that will expose everything. The day that will expose that which is in the hearts. That treachery and malice and hypocrisy and disbelief that is in the hearts of the people, it will be made clear. The iman and uprightness and truthfulness that is in the hearts of the people will be made clear. You have two faces in this world and that will be made clear. You are jealous and that will be made clear. Allah Azza wa Jal tells us about this day. يَوْمَ تُبْلَ السَّرَائِرِ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ قُوَّةٍ وَلَا نَاصِرٍ The secrets will be exposed on that day. The secrets will be exposed on that day. Naam. It's possible that a person disobeys Allah Azza wa Jalla. No human knows about it. 
If a person meets Allah without repenting, it will be exposed on that day. The individual will be exposed in front of all of the creation. The hypocrites will be exposed in front of all of the creation. Ikhwan, is this not enough for us to be straight and frank and honest instead of having two faces? Is this not enough for us to remove that treachery and deceit that we have in our hearts? Yawma tubla sara'ir. Ikhwan, and there's a difference on that day between the hal of the mujrimin and the hal of the mu'mineen. When everyone stands before Allah Azza wa Jal, there is a difference between the believers and the criminals. As for the criminals, Allah Azza wa Jal, He tells us, وَوُضِعَ الْكِتَابِ فَتَرَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِيهِ when their book is brought for them, for the criminals. And we're not talking about a criminal court or the justice system. Because in the justice system, you may have a miscarriage of justice. On this day, there will be no oppression, only your actions, only our deeds. Whoever finds good, then he should thank Allah. If we find other than that, فَلَا يَلُومَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسَ We should only blame our own selves. No cameras are needed. No witnesses are needed. Everything is recorded. Look at the mujrim, the criminal. You won't be laughing in court. This is different. وَوُضِعَ الْكِتَابِ فَتَرَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِيهِ when their book is brought, you see the criminals are horrified and petrified for that which is in their book. Every one of us sitting here today, we know what we're doing and we know what we're not doing. We know what we're involved in and we know what we're not involved in. You can fool the people, but we can never fool Allah Azza wa Jal. Ikhwan, is this not enough to face reality and be real? People show off. Even they will be exposed on Yawmul Qiyam if those deeds were not done for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. As the Prophet Sallam, he said that the first people to be brought to account for their deeds. And he mentioned three types of people. Look, Ikhwan, the danger of a riyah showing off, doing righteous deeds for people to say about you. Alhamdulillah, he's a good brother. Or she's a good sister. And that's all you care about. But you don't do it for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. You do it for the people to say that you're generous or that we have knowledge. But we don't do it for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Yawma tubla sara'ir. When we stand before Allah, everything will be exposed. Our secrets. The Prophet ﷺ, he said one of those individuals is the person that was martyred. He will be brought before Allah Azza wa Jal and acquainted with the blessings that were bestowed upon him. And he will be asked, why did he go out in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal? And he will respond that he'd done it for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And it will be said to him, you have lied. And his affair will be decided and he will be dragged to the hellfire on his face. He will be dragged to the hellfire upon his face. But in this world, what did they say about him? They said he was a martyr. He was a righteous man. But Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Yawm Tubla Sara'ir. When everything's going to be exposed, he's dragged to the hellfire upon his face. May Allah protect us all from that. The other individual, the man who learned knowledge, he read the Quran. Subhanallah al -Azim. He read the Quran. He learned knowledge. Yom al Qiyamah. He will be questioned, why did you do this? He will say and respond that he done it for the sake of Allah. It will be said to him, you have lied. And he will be dragged to the hellfire on his face. Dragged to the 
to the hellfire. The other individual is the one who spent money for the people to say he was generous. Yawm al Qiyamah, he will be met with reality. He will be questioned, why did you do this? For your sake, for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And it will be said to him, you lied, and he will be dragged to the hellfire. Yawma tubla sarahir. That day everything will be exposed. When you stand before the creator of the heavens and the earth. That day, Juan, think about it. Ponder over it. I can fool you, you can fool me. We can all fool one another. But that's not going to benefit us in the slightest. Ikhwan, the people that we need to have mercy upon and advise them is the oppressor. Look, Ikhwan, the oppressor, the zalim. Okay, he may go around thinking that he's tough, trying to oppress Muslims, fighting with Muslims. We should have mercy upon him because Yom al Qiyamah, the oppressor is going to have to carry his oppression. The one who's oppressed on that day, he is the one who's going to have the upper hand. The day when everything will be exposed. Look, Ikhwan, we walk around and we judge things based upon how much influence, how much authority. People are intoxicated by position. They know that they're not suitable for a position, but they will still dedicate wealth and they will dedicate their effort to try and attain it through treachery, through lying, through bribing, or whatever form that they can attain it. Do we not read the book of Allah Azza wa Jal? وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِ فَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُوْتَ كِتَابِيَ As for the one who will be given his book in the left hand, he will say, if only I was not given the book. What will he say, Ikhwan, when he's brought to account, when he's standing before Allah, what will he say? ماذا يقول? ما أغنى عني مالية. My wealth did not avail me in the slightest. My wealth did not avail me in the slightest. What else will he say? هلك عني سلطانية. My power is gone. Because يوم تبل السرائر. That day everything is exposed. That day reality will check each and every one of us. But Allah Azza wa Jal, the most merciful, the bestower of mercy tells us, as we mentioned at the beginning, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu allaha wal tanzur nafsan ma qaddamat li ghad. Let us analyze what we've prepared for that day when we have to stand before Allah Azza wa Jal. Ikhwani barakallahu feekum. Treachery, deceit, lying, two-facedness, hypocrisy in actions and speech, plotting and planning, these secret gatherings, and najawat. Everything will come to be exposed. Yawma tubla sarair. May Allah azza wa jal allow us to be sincere in our actions and allow our speech to be in accordance to that which is in our hearts. Wa aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiru. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wal aqibatu lil muttaqeen wa la udwana illa ala al-zalimeen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyina muhammad al-ameen وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. Brothers and sisters, as for the pious believer, he knows that he will face Allah عز وجل and that he will meet his Lord سبحانه وتعالى and stand before him. So therefore he prepares for that day. And as Allah Azza wa Jal, He tells us in the Quran about the believers who done righteous deeds. They did not do those righteous deeds because they wanted thanks from the people. Because the thanks of the people will not benefit you upon that day. 
They clearly state it. Why they would feed the orphans and the poor. And why they would do these good deeds. Because we fear our Lord. And the distress of that severe day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the state of the believers. That they fear that day and that day that they will stand before their creator. Ikhwan the believer as we see in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he did not care about this worldly life and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he did not care about the things the possessions that the people that they had because Ikhwan the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he taught us something very important he taught us how to prepare for that day when we stand before our Lord. When we stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ikhwan, we will be brought to account as it relates to one, primarily the haqq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will be questioned about the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. And we have that in the hadith of Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala an. When the Prophet sallallahu he said to Mu'ad, Atadri ma haqqullahi ala li'ibad wa haqq li'ibadi ala Allah. Oh Mu'ad, do you know the right that Allah Azawajal has upon his servants? And the right that the servants they have upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Mu'ad, he said, Allahu wa rasooluhu a'lam. Allah and his messenger knows best because the Prophet was alive at that time. Not like many people, ikhwan, look at piety because Mu'ad, he was fully aware and he believed that he was going to face Allah Azza wa Jal. He was going to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he would not say about the religion that which he did not know. So Mu'ad, he said Allah and his messenger knows best. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Haqqullahi ala al-ibad an ya'buduhu wa la yushriku bihi shay'a. That they worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone. And that they do not associate partners with him. And the right that the servants that they have upon Allah, which Allah has placed upon himself, out of his grace and his mercy and his bounty. Because we cannot make something obligatory upon Allah Azza wa Jal. Is that Allah Azza wa Jal will not punish those who do not associate partners with him. Ikhwan, learning about the rights of Allah Azza wa Jal, so that when we stand before Allah Azza wa Jal, we are prepared, ikhwan. Learning about a tawheed. Learning about the rights that Allah Azza wa Jal has upon us. How to worship Allah Azza wa Jal the way the Prophet taught us. We need to prepare for this. Not upon ignorance. Likewise, we have the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That the first thing that the servants will, will be brought to account for on the day of judgment is their prayer. If it is in order and correct, then the rest of their actions will be in order and correct. We will be brought to account Ikhwan as it relates to the rights of Allah Azza wa upon us when we stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we fulfill Ikhwan, the greatest right, which is to worship Allah Azza wa alone, then we will enter paradise. If we worship Allah Azza wa alone and we stay away from a shirk, we will enter paradise. Either immediately or eventually. Because la ilaha illallah is the key to Jannah. However, there are other rights that will be settled on that day. Yawma tubla sara'ir. The day when all secrets will be exposed. And that is the rights of the creation. Look, Ikhwan, with regards to this hadith. The hadith when the Prophet sallallahu he said, alayhi salatu was salam, that there was a woman. She entered the hellfire fi hirra due to a cat. Subhanallah. A woman entered the hellfire because of a cat. What about the rights that our wives have upon us? What about the rights that our husbands have upon us? What about the rights that our brothers have upon us? What about the rights of our children? What about the rights of the orphans and the poor and the needy? What about the rights of our parents? 
What about the rights of our relatives? What about all of these rights, Ikhwan? What about these rights? If a woman entered the hellfire due to a cat, rabatatha, walam tutimha, that she tied up and she did not feed, and she did not let loose to eat. What about us, Ikhwan? What about the rights that we have around our necks? The rights that have to be fulfilled. And if they're not fulfilled, then Yomul Qiyamah, that will be settled. How can we walk around like these things are so light when on that day when we stand before Allah Azza wa Jal, we will be brought to account for these rights and they will be settled. You oppress your wife, that will be settled. Oppression is darkness on the day of judgment. You oppress your husband, it will be settled. On that day when you, you will wish that you could run away from that oppression. You're negligent of maintaining your children. It will be settled. You don't teach them, you don't educate them about the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal. You don't clothe them, you don't feed them. That account will be settled because it's a right that you have to fulfill. The rights of your brothers and your sisters to advise them and be sincere not to have malice and treachery in your heart those accounts they will be settled Ikhwan a woman she entered the hellfire because of a cat subhanallah al-azim Ikhwan yawma tubla sarair that day when we stand before Allah and everything will be exposed you think because you stand and you sit behind a computer screen that you're getting away with your filthy and wretched activities if you're disobeying Allah Azza wa and spreading filth all over the dunya. Only a fool thinks like that. Write what you want to write because at the end of the day you're going to be brought to account. You're going to have to answer for your sins. You can be in a dark room with that light flashing on your face thinking that no one is watching you. Yomatubla Sarair. That day everything will be exposed. Ikhwan, the hadith where the Prophet he said, telling us, Ikhwan, if for example we could see if the reality of that day when we stood before Allah, when we stand before Allah, could be made apparent to us, no doubt our behavior would change. People can only behave like this and disobey Allah Azza wa Jal because they are heedless about standing before their Lord. Yawma tubla sarair. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Atadaruna mal muflis. In the famous hadith, do you know who the bankrupt individual is from amongst you? Who is the bankrupt individual? Qalu, they said, the one who has no dirham, he has no wealth, wala mata, and no possessions. The Prophet wasallam, he said that the muflis, the one who is bankrupt, is the one who comes on the day of judgment with salah. Look, he has prayer. Muslim, he prays. He fasts. He gives zakah. But what, ikhwan? Yawma tubla sarair. That day when everything will be exposed, the accounts will be settled. What? Yaqul al insan, yawma idhin ain al mafar. And that day a person will say, Where can I escape? Where can I run? Where can I, how can I get away? There's no refuge, there's no place to hide. There's no fancy defense lawyer with that slippery tongue. Ain al mafar. Where can I hide? Hide from my deeds. How can I escape reality? Ain al mafar. There's no escaping. No escaping, Ikhwan. No escaping your deeds, no escaping reality. 
The Muflis Ikhwan, the one who comes Yawm al Qiyamah with prayer, with zakah, with fasting. He's a Muslim. But what? Shatama hadha. He abused this one. Qadhafa hadha. He slandered the other person. Wasafaka dama hadha. He spilled the blood of this individual. Daraba hadha. He beat this person. Then what, Ikhwan? Fayu'ta min hasanatihi. The people that he oppressed, don't worry, Ikhwan. If people slander you, if they backbite you, if they wrong you, it's going to be dealt with. We will stand before Allah and everything will be addressed. The scores will be settled. Ain al mafar. They will ask, how do I escape? There's no escape. So he takes from his good deeds. Then once all the good deeds are exhausted, then what, Ikhwan? Then he starts to incur some of the bad deeds from these individuals whom he oppressed. May Allah protect us all from that. We spend our time praying and fasting, but we're going to give our deeds away so easily. Look at the plot of the shaitan, Ikhwan. The muflis is then thrown into the hellfire. One good deed, Ikhwan, on that day, when? The day when everything will be exposed, the secrets will be made apparent. One good deed is better than this world and everything that it contains. But you gave it away so cheaply. We gave it away so cheaply. By oppressing people. By wronging people. Ikhwan, we can continue with this. Ashahid barakallahu feekum. Let us leave here today and try and remember that day when we will stand before Allah Azza wa Jal. When we will be brought to account al hisab wal ard. And if we have wronged anyone, let us settle it. If in our heart we have malice, then let us remove it. If we're jealous of our brother, then let us solve it. And let us strive against our soul and remove it. If we want evil for the Muslims, then let us correct it. If we're plotting and planning to bring down the people of the Sunnah, let us stop it. Yawma tubla sara'ir. That day everything will be exposed. May Allah Azza wa Jal prevent us from being exposed on that day. May Allah Azza wa Jal conceal our shortcomings and allow us to rectify them before we meet him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to die upon al-Islam and die upon the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I ask Allah azza wa jalla that he makes us sincere in our speech and our actions and he makes us brothers and sisters for the sake of Allah azza wa jalla. Not because of dunya, worldly affairs or position or any worldly benefit because we do it for the sake of Allah azza wa jalla.